My name is Patrice Williams. I'm a life designer. I'm a soul connector. I'm an alchemist. And this is the Professor Williams. Welcome to my channel. It becomes so clear to me that my students are not the only ones who are wanting some of the information. Today in class, we had parents join us. We had some younger siblings. We've had, you know, people who are not my students, best friends, all kind of people come in to kind of see what it is that we are doing in designing your life at Spelman College. And so we want to extend this right now because it is not just 41 students who need to be designing right now. It's a whole lot of change going on. It's a whole lot of difference going on. And we just want to make sure that we can kind of ease your minds and your hearts and some spirits and give you a little bit of power back in your experience. That's what we're here to do. Um, so thank you so much, Gabby. Thank you so much, DJ Rico Belly. We appreciate you for giving us a little bit of a party. Um, before I get started, I want y'all to know that the votes have been tallied. I was watching the live while Dre was getting it in and we will be having a Juve edition because I see <laughs> that y'all missing out, okay? We are going to have a Juve edition. Now, I don't know when Juve should have been, but to me, the Caribbean spirit is about freedom and freedom to embrace who you are, freedom to love as you love, freedom to be all of the things. And so we're going to do that. We're going to tap all the way in. This is a series. Um, we are going to be doing this every single Monday. I'm going to be doing this. Sometimes it'll be Gabby. Sometimes it'll be Dre. Sometimes it'll be whomever would like to be a part of this. Let me know um, and tap in because A, I want to make sure that you guys get exposure. I want to make sure that my students are able to not just help themselves, but to help, but to also help the people around them. Um, so, Gabby and I spoke a little bit earlier today, and I'm going to give y'all a little bit of class for about 15, 20 minutes. Is that cool with you, Gabby? Yes. Okay. So, let's get started. Um, please, absolutely, if you have any questions, I have a couple moderators um, who are with us today. Definitely, Gabby, thank you so much again. We have Shablis, both students who were in my Designing Your Life class last week. I'm sorry, last semester. So who know and have been through the entire journey. So I'm just so grateful that you guys are here. Um, make sure you ask whatever you got to ask. Make sure you say whatever you have to say. And please share, share, share to whomever you want to, to whomever you think could benefit from any and all of the things that we're going to be talking about. Um, just so y'all know, my students know, um, but I want to welcome you guys to my classroom. Class is officially in session. And in my classroom, I'm a little bit colorful with my language. So if that is um, offensive to you in any way, I apologize right now. Um, but this is a free space to be authentic. And so I'm going to be authentic with who I am too. And she uses four letter, uh, four letter words from time to time. Um, let's talk about change integration and welcoming change. Um, it's really interesting. It's really exciting to me to recognize that right before we went to spring break, our class topic was change integration. It is one of the pillars of my classroom, along with authenticity, empowerment, along with life design and design thinking. Um, just for though, I mean, I'm sure we all know, change is one of the things that can put anybody on edge. Change is something that is scary. Change is something that a lot of people are not looking forward to. They are not having a good time when change shows up to the party. Um, but we also all know that change is the one thing out of every single element in life, change is the one thing that is constant. Change happens every single day. So it's so interesting for us all, for the thing that we can't control, for that one thing that happens regardless of whether we want it to or not, when it shows up, we go running from it. So... I want to give y'all a story. I want to tell you guys a narrative just a little bit about change, if that's okay. I'm going to use a sports analogy. In my classroom, a couple of weeks ago, before we went to spring break, I brought in this big old orange ball, like a beach ball. It's spring break, right? So I brought in a beach ball to class, and we talked about baseball, the game of baseball. If you've ever played baseball before, if you were ever into sports, give me a wave, give me a heart, give me a something. Let me know who I'm talking to. Um, so 
we talked about baseball and baseball is something that's really interesting when I was at Spelman I'm class of 2009 when I was at Spelman I used to go to Turner Field and I used to sit and watch the game. It was my safe space. It was before we had SunTrust Park. It was when the Braves played there. And it would be the place where nobody knew to go looking for me, but knew if I probably couldn't be found, that might be where I would be. And so something really interesting about not just baseball, but most sports. And that is it involves a ball flying from any random direction at any given moment into some direction. And there's a field of people who in one way or another have to not only catch it, hopefully, or hit it, but then be able to look at the entire field and immediately be able to take that ball and not just redirect it anywhere, but redirect it to the space where the team as a whole has the highest chance of succeeding and winning this game. But it's not just a game that they play when it's game time. It's a game that's practiced again and again and again. So my ball players know you have catching practice. And you literally go and you practice this ball coming from some random place on a field regularly. And you have to be able to catch it from any direction that it might come from, at any speed that it might come from, and then do something with it. And not just anything, but the smartest thing with it. That's what's happening with us right now. We are just in a game. We are in a game where the ball came from a direction that we weren't expecting. We were looking at the ball to come from home field and for, you know, whoever was up to bat to hit it. But lo and behold, a ball came flying from left outfield and we weren't expecting it. And so rather than trying to figure out how to catch this ball, a lot of us ran from it or turned away from it. Well, the crazy thing is that ball is coming anyway. The ball is coming anyway. Change is going to show up. Change is going to show up whether it's graduation being canceled. Change is going to show up whether... It, hmm, let's talk about graduation because I know that's heavy on a lot of my seniors' hearts. Um, there are a lot of reasons why graduation might not have happened for you. Now, there's a 99% chance that most of my seniors would have probably gotten to the point where they walked across that stage at Spelman College, Morehouse College, whatever school you're coming from or going to, okay? But there are a lot of things in life that happen and this is a space where we get to appreciate, right? Because God forbid graduation didn't happen because of actual loss of life. God forbid graduation didn't happen because God forbid, I'm Spelman class of 2009, I've said that already, but God forbid Spelman College no longer existed or Morehouse College no longer existed or whatever the thing was. Maybe our grades, we thought they were one thing on Tuesday. I didn't say y'all not graduating anyway. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there has always been a, ch a chance that life was not going to go exactly the way that you were expecting it to go. That's what I'm saying. Be it graduation, be it getting in your car and going down the street, being whatever it is, we have been able to exist in this world as Americans, as humans of, I am used to doing the same type of routine on a daily basis. I'm used to waking up, I brush my teeth, I wash my face, I take a shower, then I go have breakfast, and from breakfast I go to work, and then from work or school I go do this, and then I go do that, and then I'm in SGA, and then I'm on mahogany, and then I'm on, I'm on my sorority or fraternity, and then I'm in all of these things. Just because it happens like that for you, 15 times out of 16, there is still that chance that on that 16th time it may not go the way that you expected it to go. So what you guys are truly getting is a realistic view of what life actually is. Control and the thought of it is all an illusion. There was always a chance that there would be something. Now that something today is coronavirus. But it always could be something it could always be that ball flying from somewhere that you didn't think it was going to be flying from. And you get a whole lot further when you prepare to figure out how to catch it. Redirect yourself. Assess the playing field. And then throw it somewhere where you have the highest likelihood of succeeding. 
That's life design. And so often we put ourselves in a, in, a, in a position where we're upset with the way that our journey unfolds and we don't have to be. You can accept the way your journey is unfolding and as you get new information, you can adjust. Well, this play, the ball came from first base. Well, next play, it might come from right field. And then the next play, it might come from third base. It might come from any of the places. So what is really important for me to be able to create here, it's a space that we have in office hours with a lot of my students. It's a space that we have in class. And it's a space that I wanna be able to create here from whoever is wanting to be a part of this. Is that you don't have to just be reactive to life. You actually can adjust. You actually can take information at any given point on your experience and then do something with it. So coronavirus has now happened. Do we seize up? Do we freeze and let, allow this ball that's flying 90 miles an hour in our direction to hit us and possibly injure us? Or do we say, all right, let's figure out how, re how to renegotiate this thing. I thought this is what I wanted to do. I thought this is where I was gonna go. I thought on tomorrow and on the next Wednesday and on the May 17th of 2020 when I thought I was gonna be doing any of these things, What if you just stopped and said, okay, now what can I do? We can focus on all the things that you can't do. And all those things ain't going to get you nowhere. Or we can stop and look at our actual options. And then choose one. My students can help you know we have a, um, a process for getting unstuck. That's the whole class on getting unstuck. First of all, you got to recognize that you're not stuck in the first place. Water is going to flow. If you pour water in any direction, I don't care what's in its way. A couple of things are going to happen. It's going to wear that thing down and get around it anyway. It's going to find any nook, crevice, minuscule hole in any way to get through it. The water is going to get whatever, wherever it needs to get. And that's what you need to do right now is be willing to flow. Be willing to flow with the situation. Because it's going to be a whole, lot a whole lot more tiring to try to fight against that current. I'm not saying don't feel your emotions, feel all of them. Sit with them for a minute and not just to feel your emotions, to recognize where they come from. Why is it that this is upsetting for you? Is it upsetting because you couldn't control it? Is it upsetting because all these other people had these expectations for what your journey at this space was supposed to look like? What is the reason why this is uncomfortable? And then once you figure that out, then you figure out how to address it, deal with it, and flow around it. Because this is all about a journey. And I need you, I need us all, not just y'all, I need us all to recognize that we are in a beautiful position. We are in a beautiful position where the entire world said, let me press pause for just a minute. I'm going to press pause for you. I'm going to press pause so you can take a minute for three weeks and worry about the things that do matter. You go into school for law and you are, you know, oh my gosh, I got to study for the LSAT and I got to do this and I have to do that. Have you stopped to assess if that's really what you want to do anyway? Or is that the version of somebody else's life that they want you to have? Life is giving you the opportunity to sit down and figure that thing out. Figure out exactly what it is that you want. Figure out exactly how it is that you can take the steps understanding the gravity problems that exist. Let me tell you what a gravity problem is in our class. Gravity is just that. You can try to fight against the fact that your feet gonna touch this ground all you want to. You get a lot further if you use it to your advantage. So, that's what we're here to do, is to integrate these spaces where life is moving and flowing in a way where we weren't expecting it accept them welcome it open our arms up and say hello let me sit with you for a minute because i ain't got nothing else to do i don't have anything else to do but sit in the corner in my house where nobody else is and learn myself love myself i'm out here trying to get everybody else to like me 
I'm out here trying to get everybody else to accept me and appreciate me and prioritize me and their experience, but you ain't prioritized yourself. Matter of fact, oftentimes when the opportunities come for us to sit with ourselves, we run from them. So why don't we expect the other people who we aren't their priority in the first place to not run from it too? Figure out why the change is important to you. That's what if the takeaway from today, and we're about to get into some questions because I'm not going to hold y'all all night, and we definitely going to get back to a party in just a few minutes, okay? It's a party with a purpose. Recognize why this is as bothersome to you as it is. Hey, all my students who keep saying hi. <laughs> Recognize why this is as bothersome to you as it is. Why is it so hard for you to be wherever it is that you are? Why is it so hard for you to spend a long time with yourself? Why is it so hard for you to focus on your internal when you don't have anywhere else to be but there? How many people on a daily basis are spending way too much time trying to figure out the outside? Y'all on the external, y'all on TV, y'all are on Instagram and Twitter and all of these things trying to focus on what's going on on the external and it ain't nothing you can do out there no way. Take this time for you. Take this time to love you. Take this time to learn you. Take this time to end whatever part of your life is no longer healthy for you. Take this time to uncover all the toxic places that's sitting and stewing all up in your spirit. Figure out what it is and release it. You'll be all the better for it. We have a cycle that we talk about in my class. Um, this is a Professor Williams original. <laughs> and there's a life cycle that we all go on that I think Few of us recognize the butterfly does it. I think as humans, because we have intellect, we think that we are not a part of nature. I think that we feel like we are separate in some way from all of the other things that just happen in life. And we're not. Just like the butterfly is a caterpillar. We were talking about this in office hours earlier today. There's a caterpillar that's minding its own business out here eating leaves and shit, crawling all over the place, doing whatever it is that it does. And then one day something in its spirit says, this thing don't fit no more. This, this version of life don't feel like right no more. And it doesn't even know why. And so from there, literally the whole outside of its body flips itself in. It goes inward. And it transforms. And in that space, that butter, I mean, that caterpillar has to release every single thing that it ever, ever was and ever thought it was and all of the small thoughts that it could have possibly had so that it could begin to transform into this butterfly. This thing that got wings. The body shape ain't the same. All the colors and things about to come out. And you are given the opportunity. Y'all don't understand. Y'all get spring break and summer break and stuff. Grown folks don't get breaks. You got to work every day. <laughs> and so you guys are getting an opportunity to go sit down and to go spend time in your cocoon and go spend time focusing on the things that you want to focus on. And you get to transform here if you choose to. And when it's all said and done, you get to emerge as this beautiful creature that's nothing like it ever was before. The butterfly don't, I mean, the butterfly doesn't even have all the legs that caterpillars have. It has wings. And we talked about this earlier today. You can choose in this moment to be upset about your transformation process, but something is going to happen when you bust out of that cocoon. You can either choose to learn to use your wings or be mad that you have them. Those wings are the things that's going to set you free. Those wings are the things that will take you from place to place and all over the world, spreading the seeds that will allow us to continue to live. Butterflies literally make the world go round in many ways. So you have to release the things that don't fit. Bust out of the parts of yourself that aren't meant to remain there and use this for good. Because I strongly believe 
in the craziest of ways that whatever we each individually choose to do during this time in our lives will completely dictate everything that happens going forward whether you choose to transform in this cocoon or not literally will, will shift your entire way of being we're inside with family we're inside with people who we don't get to spend this kind of time with we're at spelman homesick and then we go home ready to leave this is the time for you to really foster the connections with the people who matter to you because trust and believe everybody's at home everybody is at home but you got to start with you you need to foster that relationship with yourself first in class today, we talked about releasing our addictions, identifying what our addictions are. And in our addictions, what are they keeping us from? What are we focusing on? Whatever it be it sex, be it drugs, be it music, be it control, be it um, dysfunctional thinking, be it negative thoughts about ourselves or others. Whatever those things are, you get to sober up. This is a reality check. Because life done blew your whole high. What if you don't want shit? That's fine. The only person that's going to affect is you. That's just like saying, what if you don't want the 90 mile per hour baseball to come flying your way? Too late. It's on its way. You can choose to figure out how to catch it or you can get a black eye. <laughs> okay. Next question. I love y'all too. You ready for the next question? I'm ready. Okay. The next question is normal has a new meaning for us all mm -hmm. now. How do we prepare ourselves for the future considering we don't know what that might look like once this social distancing is over? Mm. The beauty of life is perspective and awareness. And the truth of the matter is you all, I'm not gonna say you all, but I can say a lot of my students and a lot of this generation have major anxiety issues, major depression issues. And the reason for the anxiety was not knowing. So nothing has changed. It's just a different cause. Nothing has changed. You still don't know what's going on. You didn't know what was going on last week. You weren't certain about anything. And that is okay. It's about embracing that. I am 32 years old right now. 25. When I graduated from Spelman, you could not have paid me to think that I was going to be teaching at Spelman. Matter of fact, this time last year, you couldn't have paid me to think I was going to be teaching at Spelman. It just wasn't a part of my plan. The more you are open to life showing up for you, the more it will surprise you. The more you hold on to the control and the ish and the things that you think life is supposed to be this way you lose the ability for life to show up for you in its own way are you ready for the next question what else you got okay sorry i'm having a situation <laughs> <laughs> it's okay the next question is i know you've spoken with some students of your some of your students about the weight of the decision they make now Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about the importance of our choices right now and how they might propel us or hinder us? So the beauty about choices is that's what they always do. Every choice has a consequence. The thing is, I really don't believe in major bad choices. You know what I mean? Like, life is about us figuring out who we are. And oftentimes, our idea of a bad choice is a choice that the people on the outside of us wouldn't have wanted us to make. For whatever the reason may be. It's really important for us to make sure that we focus on the choice that feels right in our spirit. But you have to be able to listen to yourself and even know what your voice sounds like over anyone else's to be able to answer that choice. To be able to actually choose in a way that's authentic to you. The weight of all of our choices matter. They do. But that's why it's important to recognize that you always have the ability to be proactive, not reactive. So I make this choice. That choice went terribly well. You know what? We're going to do a live about it because it's a whole class. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. We call it failure immunity. And failure immunity is about recognizing that we never fail. We just learn a lesson. But if you allow it to sit you down, you miss part of your lesson and you miss the ability to come back faster. 
when you screw up, if you go ahead and take care of it really quickly, you have a much easier ability to shift the trajectory. It doesn't have as lasting of an impact or influence. You messed up. Everybody messes up. Choose something different. Don't sit down and let your failure begin to... Mm, if it, if it stay on your uh, timeline too long, people might associate it with your character for real. Mm. Yeah, that's word. Yeah. <laughs> Choices are not bad things. Failure is not bad things. Screw ups are not bad things. It's what you do with it and how quickly you do something with it when you realize it's not working. If you stay on the same journey when you know you keep getting, you're going in the wrong direction. If you're trying to get to California from Georgia and you drive in north, there comes a point where you realize you got to go west too. The worst that's going to happen is you're just not going to get where you're trying to get. That's fine. That's fine because it's not going to impact too many other people. We always have victims to our circumstances. But the faster you realize you should be driving west, you save a whole lot of gas, you save a whole lot of money, you don't wear down your tires as much, your engine not, you know, like, come on. The faster you go, the quicker you get to where it is that you're trying to get. It's that simple. It's that simple. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> if we're thinking about this in terms of preparation for our own rebirth, yes. how can we appreciate the pain that comes with it? I was about to start singing, y'all. <laughs> no pain, no pain, no gain. I don't believe that, actually. I believe there are a lot of things you can do where you gain without it having to be painful. That is a dysfunctional belief, period. However, comma. It's a lot of people who feel like once they understand that they should be doing something different, they should automatically have the full, um, they should be able to gain it all at the same time. If you're trying to go to the gym because you're trying to build muscle and you're like you know what i want to bench press 200 pounds i don't know y'all know what i'm saying i want to bench press 200 pounds and you can't lift a three pound weight that's not smart because your arms might snap there are drastic consequences that come with trying to grow too quickly right now you're gonna have your savants you're gonna have your few people every now and again that's gonna be able to make that thing shake because there's something in their spirit they were born with it we don't know but for the majority of us it's a real good chance to start with three and then go to five and then move on up to seven maybe you need a rest day and you want to go back to zero for a couple days then come back and do that thing at 10 pounds and build yourself to the point where you're able to lift it all. But there are periods where our body is gonna need to break down so that it can build. It releases this thing called lactic acid, right? Go watch, what is it, Tune In Tuesdays on my IG post. You'll see we had a whole class about it. It'll break that thing all the way down. So allow your body, mm, lactic acid is a byproduct of your muscles breaking down so that they can build. In them breaking down so that they can build, it releases the toxins that would have inhibited it from growing in the first place. That's all the pain is. It's breaking the parts of you where you built it on a rocky foundation, on something that was never going to be able to hold you or sustain you. It's taking it apart. Releasing the parts that don't fit, releasing the fillers and the byproducts and all the things that don't fit for your muscles to operate at their highest and best. So the pain that you were experiencing when you were getting to know yourself are probably parts, dysfunctional beliefs that you held on to about somebody calling you ugly, about somebody calling you stupid, about somebody saying that you weren't enough this or too much that. Yes, you're going to have to release it. And you hold, held on to it long enough that you thought it was your own idea. You thought it really was yours. So, of course, you got to take a jackhammer to that thing, break the foundation apart, release the parts that don't fit, pour in some good concrete, 
that will be able to build you back together in a way that anything will be able to stand on top of you in the healthiest of ways. What else you got, Gabby? This is fun. Okay, so one of our viewers, mm -hmm. Gabrielle Sumter, she asked about economic fallback due to the virus and mm -hmm. what um, you suggest about for them emotionally and professionally moving forward. Okay, so first of all, you have to recognize that nothing was promised to you anyway. A lot of this is feelings of entitlement. Well, I saw the people who graduated before me and they were getting all these job offers and so I'm supposed to have them too. Or maybe life is calling for you to innovate something. Maybe life is calling for you to not figure out how to make somebody else better, but to figure out how to find the greatness in yourself and work in that purpose. Maybe life is saying, you know what, let's break some of these feelings and some of these dysfunctional beliefs about it. I... It is owed to me. I deserve success. Life said, let me teach you a lesson real quick. And you know what? I believe life, God, universe, spirit, whatever it is that you call it, it's far too great to try to bless one person at a time. So it said, you know what? Let me sit everybody down because y'all all got this dysfunctional belief. And so half of y'all going to be learning this lesson. Three of y'all over here going to learn this lesson. Fifteen of y'all over in that corner, y'all going to learn this lesson. Let's just all do this at one time. Because if we go sit down for three weeks and everybody gets well, then we can come back together and maybe possibly work together in a way where you believe in yourself a little bit more. Where you're able to operate in this thing called passion and purpose. So many people are like, oh, I just want to be in my purpose. Okay, Does you, did you think your purpose looked like somebody else's? Were you trying to say, well, you know what? They are uh, an IG influencer and they have 15,000 followers. And did you know they getting paid this for that? That's their blessing, not yours. You need to go find yours. And maybe if you innovated in the way that they did, when they did, you won't be, people will be trying to follow you. Just maybe. <laughs> Okay, um, using unhealthy coping mechanisms. Oh, this about to be good. I just got excited. Is the equivalent, okay, so y'all remember the gym uh, analogy, right? Mm -hmm. So this gym analogy where you're going to the gym and you are trying to build these muscles in the right way. So you go do all this work in the gym and then you go home and you bake a pan of brownies and that's dinner. That's drugs, that's alcohol, that's all the things. If you are using it to cope, if you are using it to cover up what it is that you really should be working and focusing on, all that weight you're trying to lose ain't going nowhere, dog. Because the whole time you fighting yourself, you're like, let me go for a run. Damn, I love chocolate cake. Let me go to the gym and let me go lift some weights. Man, but did y'all see whatever it is that your particular vice is? It's going to work against you. It's nobody's fault. I mean, it's not. We all get our lessons in the time and in the space that we need to. So it's not about an attack. It's about a realization. I realize that if I go to the gym and then if I burn 500 calories at the gym and then I go eat 500 calories of, on top of what my daily caloric intake should be, Nothing, the scale ain't shifting. So whoever said not chocolate cake, I really enjoy chocolate cake. I'm reading my own self to y'all who think I'm reading you. This is, you know, we all getting this a two for one special. <laughs> you ready for the next question? I'm ready. Okay. Do you have any words for people who are having a particularly difficult time walking away from the things that don't serve them? Mmm. -hmm. Yes, I have words. It's okay. That's called resistance and we all have it. It's really difficult to try to do away with a part of you that is a part of you. Like as dysfunctional as it is, I don't know what the, per mm, caterpillar. Let's go back to the cal caterpillar and the butterfly. 
can you imagine? Oh, we talked about this earlier in office hours. Can you imagine how difficult it must be for that butterfly to come out of that cocoon, literally have to bust out of a cocoon with wings that it ain't never knew that it had, ain't never learned to use before? That's no fun. Like, what do you mean I have to learn to rewalk? What do you mean that I'm used to having 20 legs and now I got two? What do you mean I gotta use, like, I used to be able to just chew on the leaves, but butterflies don't have that capability. They got to get the nectar out with the little tongue thing, right? It's literally a totally new way of operating fully and completely. So it's okay that you feel your feelings and you are grieving the loss of the part of you that has always been there. That's what it is, grief. Grief ain't nothing but an acknowledgement of love. I acknowledge that this is a part of me no matter how toxic what toxic it was, I loved it. We all have dated some people, I definitely have. Um, that wasn't the healthiest for me. But I sure loved the whole hell out of the toxicity and I still cried even though it was just really bad. And I maybe, probably, possibly should have never allowed myself to be a part of it. It's okay to recognize that yes, you truly are losing something. And you can, it's both and, it's not either or. You can be sad that you are losing something and you can be excited about what you are gaining. Both can exist in the same space. It ain't gotta be one or the other. So be gentle with yourself, is my words to the person who's like, damn, this don't feel good. I know, boo, it's okay. It didn't feel good for me either. Go ahead, do it, you got this. And that's why whoever said it, you definitely are in my class because courage and comfort can't exist in the same space. We talk about that all the time. Courage and comfort do not exist in the same place. Okay, so we have another question from one of our beautiful viewers out there. Yes. The question says, someone wants to know what activities would be good to do to look within effectively. I know, like, did you talk about this is like everyone's own journey, but mm -hmm. what would you suggest would be a good starting point? Okay, so we do this thing in my class called the why, under the why, under the why, under the why. Okay, yes, faith and fear don't exist in the same place. You better say that word. Whoever, Katie, absolutely. Faith and fear do not exist in the same place. Um, Say that one more time, Gabby. I'm sorry. I got, I got distracted. You. What activities would be good to do to look within effectively? Okay. The why, my answer to that is the why, under the why, under the why, under the why. So this is how we reflect in my class, okay? Um, and it's what I've given a lot of my personal uh, coaching clients to do, um, and a lot of my students have done it too. So take some time and sit down with yourself, okay? And if the first thing that you have that comes to your mind about like, a question that one of my students is facing right now or came up with is why and how am I standing in my own way? What's this question? So why and how am I standing in my own way? You read, you sit down, take 20 minutes, reflect on that. The next day you come back, you read what you wrote and then you reflect on your reflection. So why were these the things that came up? So maybe on day one, you uncover, um, you know, I'm standing in my own way because I want approval from others. So day two, you come back, you read it, and you go, hmm, I need approval from others because growing up, I was a middle child and I always felt overlooked. And you end up going into that part of yourself. Okay, so as a middle child, why did you feel overlooked? That's the next day. You come back, find, go at least six levels deep. Why, under the why, under the why, under the why, under the why. And that's where you're going to find your magic. That's where you're going to find the answers to your questions. Because by the time you get that deep, you have uncovered all of the layers that A, are excuses, B, belong to other people, 
and you get to really know yourself. So maybe that's one question. There are lots of questions you can ask. Today we went through, what am I addicted to? That was what we covered in office hours. What am I addicted to right now? And how am I using this addiction to cover up something else? And what is that thing that I'm covering up? And you go five levels deep. Let's do one more question. Okay. Um, okay. With so much urgency in the air, how do we make sure we're making time to take care of ourselves? What else do you have to do? That's my question. How do I make time to take care of myself? You literally don't have anything else to do. So the question really is, if not now, when? If not when the whole world has gone on lockdown, if not when you don't have anywhere to go, because here's the beautiful thing about this period right now. We are learning that the only way we can take care of anybody else is if we take care of ourselves. That literally is what the Surgeon General is saying. That's what the government is saying. That's what all the doctors are saying. You go outside trying to put your well on everybody else. You're going to catch somebody else is sick because sickness don't always show on your face. Sickness don't always show in a cough. Sickness doesn't always show on your external. So you need to go sit your butt down and keep yourself well so that when all the people who are sick get well, it's not recycling itself. You have to focus on yourself because that is how you are caring to others. That is how you are loving others. That is how you're not killing somebody else with your shit. And coronavirus is not the only sick that we out here spreading. It's all of the things. 